Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell means mystery, adventure. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. Yes? Good. Yes, I know that in 48 hours it's going to be Christmas, but who is this? Who? Look, I'm a big boy now, so... Okay, tonight at 8. Goodbye. What the devil was that? This may come as a shock to you, Mr. Wolf, but that was Santa Claus. You've been drinking? Uh-huh, the usual, Mill. He's coming to see you at 8. He's got a problem. Indeed. It seems that some low, not to mention murderous character, is going around slaughtering Santa Clauses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bulkiest, bulkiest, smartest, and most unpredictable detective in the world. That chair-born genius, Nero Wolfe. Created by Rex Stout and brought to you in a new series of adventures over this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. Earlier than eight, however, the case of the slaughtered Santas, it began to be precise on the corner of 34th Street and Carlisle. The hour was close to six, the weather cold, the sky dark. Uh, how you doing, Santa? Uh, I'm freezing to death, officer. Well, it's a cold day. You packing up? Yeah, I guess so. Not many people around anymore. Oh, heading for home and dinner. How was the collection? Well, I, I don't need no armored car, but... A few dozen kids are going to have something for their Christmas stockings. Your competition, the guy in the opposite corner, has already screamed. <laughs> Probably got low blood pressure. Yeah, give me a hand to get the collection part off the chains, eh? Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll just walk you down the block. Got a phone in. Okay, fine. One Santa still left. Wonder what he's waiting for. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> Well, watch yourself going down those chimneys tonight. Sure, sure. Well, I'll cut across the avenue here. Be seeing you. Hey, that car coming down the street. Got the lights out. Look out! Hey, Peg. Huh? Did I ever tell you I love you? Oh, it's not me you love. It's a hot soup. Ah, now, you're not the only woman who can cook a dish of soup. Huh? It helps, though. I'm just beginning to thaw out. Yeah, that's a cold corner you play Santa Claus on. Well, don't hurt to make a few bucks. I ain't done so good this past year. Well, maybe the next year it'll be... Oh, well. Besides, I kind of like it, you know. Kids asking questions all day long. Yeah. You know, I wonder how, how they figure the other two Santas at the intersection. Our kids think of only one thing at a time. <laughs> More soup? Sure, Pat. You know, uh, one of them other Santas got hit by a car tonight. Oh? Yeah, he packed up a few minutes before I did, started crossing the avenue, and bang! He, you know, hit and run driver. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. Was he hurt? Yes, he was killed. <laughs> Here's your soup. Oh, with traffic the way it is nowadays... Well, I better take a look at the stew. Somebody's the door. I'll get it, Peg. Okay. Yeah, what? Oh, oh! Mike! Mr. Wolf? Yes, Archie? I've been thinking. Good heavens. Oh, I admit it won't bring about a national emergency. But, Mr. Wolf, Christmas is only a couple of days away. If you're hinting about your present... No, no, no. I was just imagining you behind a team of reindeer. Your imagination is morbid. You'd make a wonderful Santa Claus. Truly. You got the perfect build for it. Of course, as for character... Archie. Yeah. <laughs> Can you picture me scrambling down a chimney? <laughs> well, they might have to build bigger chimneys, but... Bah. Well, there's that, too. However... That is the front door. True. I was thinking... You might see who it is. Well, if nobody's been lying to me on the phone, that'll be Santa Claus. Let him in. But I haven't decided what I want for Christmas yet, Mr. Wolf. For example, should she be blonde or brunette, tall or short? Archie. On my way. 
Good evening. I dislike dawdling on anyone's doorstep. Well, stop dawdling. Come in, please. Mr. Wolf has been warned of my arrival. He has. Through here. Uh, Mr. Wolf, this is uh, Santa Claus. My name is Barton. John Barton. How do you do, sir? I have no time for the social graces, Mr. Wolf. I'm about to be murdered. Hardly in my house, I have objections. I'm a frightened man, Mr. Wolf. Indeed. This, this costume you see me in is responsible for it all. Why are you in it? I had a notion it might be, well, entertaining to play Santa Claus in public. I'm a wealthy man, sir. I can afford to have whims. Therefore, I have assumed this masquerade. However, it apparently <laughs> is going to be the death of me. Mr. Barden, you have adequately conveyed an atmosphere and an emotion. I suggest you concentrate on facts now. Very well. I have been acting as Santa Claus for the tuberculosis fund. My station is the corner of 34th Street and Carlisle Avenue. I might add the northeast corner. Why? Because at that intersection there have been two other Santa Clauses. One on the southeast corner and one on the southwest corner. Three Santa Clauses, then, on three corners. Yes, now then. Earlier tonight, the man on the southwest corner started home. He was crossing the avenue when he was run down and killed by an automobile. A regrettable accident. The car was running without lights. It deliberately ran the fellow down and then vanished. Not an accident, Mr. Wolf. You saw this yourself? I did. One Santa Claus dead. The man on the southeast corner got home all right. According to the radio news flash, that's where he was killed. By bullets. Coincidence? Possibly. But I wouldn't want to risk my life on the chance. This is Friday night, and the nature of things, you would have made two more appearances. Very well, Mr. Barton. I'll write you a check as a retainer, then hurry along home. I'm late now. No. I beg your pardon. You will neither hurry home nor notify anyone at your home of your whereabouts. But I... You will remain here until such time as I think it's safe for you to leave. The house is well guarded. I can't do that. In which case, I cannot accept you as a client. I fail to understand. Mr. Barden, it is very easy to murder someone. Avoiding the consequences of such an action is something else again. However, I'm assuming that you're not primarily interested in what happens to your murderer after you're dead? Of course not. Therefore, you remain here. Archie? Yep. First, the corner of 34th and Carlisle, a complete report. But that's nonsense. The corner will be deserted Mr. now. Mr. Barton. You're hiring my intelligence. You will therefore permit me to use it as I see fit. A complete report, Archie. Right, sir. You will then visit Inspector Crame at headquarters. You will, in whatever manner you find effective, collect all the police information about the two already murdered Santas. Fine. The manner, I think, will be applying a blowtorch to the inspector's toes. Your levity is ill-timed. The inspector is likely to throw me out of my ear. Your problem. My ear... And on your way home, you might stop in at Mr. Barton's place. I don't see any purpose in that. Mr. Barton, there is a basic problem to which we must find an answer. Whether those two men were murdered because they were Santa Clauses, or because their deaths were merely preliminaries to yours. Archie, I suggest haste. Yes, sir. And avoid blondes. Hmm? <laughs> I would like you to be home in time for Christmas. Hey, Pugs. Mm. Yeah? Got the price of a cup of coffee? <laughs> you sure you mean coffee? Either you're gonna dig it up or you ain't. Never mind the questions about my personal affairs, see? Oh, I apologize. Here. Two bits. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Don't let me keep you. You're not. 34th in Carlisle, huh? During the day filled with milling throngs. And... Hey, that's a nice phrase. I'll have to remember it. Milling throngs. And now, desolate and deserted. Well, that's life. Is that a fact? That's philosophy. Yeah. Well, for two bits, I don't have to listen to no philosophy, see? Good night, bud. <laughs> <laughs> The inspector's got company. If all you reporters will shut up and ask your questions one by one, I'll answer them. Inspector Kramer, it's true a couple of Santa Clauses have been knocked off tonight? It's true that two men who have been employed as Santa Claus by charitable organizations have been murdered, yes. Any connection between those two guys, or does somebody just hate Santa Claus? 
You know, so far as we know, there is no connection. That means it could be maybe some kind of maniac who decided he doesn't like Christmas or Santa Claus. Is that right? Yeah, the department is investigating along those lines. Like how? Well, we're checking all the local asylums for possible escape lunatics. Yeah, but, Inspector, suppose this nut has never been in an asylum. That'll be all, boys. Oh, but listen. Now. Oh, I said that'll be all. Now, anything new comes in, you'll get it, understand? A uh, good one. Hello, Inspector. Yeah, I spotted you coming in. What happened? You decided to reform and got a job on a paper? Nope. I'm a public-spirited citizen, that's all. Yeah, I could add a few things to that description with practically no strain at all. Mr. Wolf and I are very sentimental about Christmas. We object to Santa Claus's being killed. Nuts. Oh, Inspector, aren't you in favor of Christmas? I'm in favor of Christmas. I'm in favor of motherhood. I'm in... Leave motherhood out of this. Neither of us are mothers. Our chances of becoming mothers aren't too good either. And furthermore, oh, Okay, would... okay, you're not given. So get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Inspector. Uh, but, Goodwin, yeah? in case Wolf decides to send me something for Christmas, you know what I wish he'd send me? What? Your head. <laughs> Well. Oh. Now I know what I want for Christmas. What did you say? I said my name is Goodwin and it's cold on your doorstep. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you didn't mention your name. I'm Laura Barton. Mrs. Laura Barton? No. Fine, fine. That is, what relation are you to John Barton? His niece. Why do you ask? Oh, you've got a beautiful voice. Uh, all this marble and no butler? Well, I don't know where Pleasant is. He should be here. Have him but... shot at sunrise. Oh, Laura. Uh, Wayne, this is Mr. Goodwin. I never heard of him. What does he want? Well, I don't Wayne know. Wayne what? Stevens. Uh-huh. Friend of Mr. Barton? Half-brother, but we seem to be doing all the answering. How about your answering some questions, Goodwin? I'll try. Come into the library. What do you want? For Christmas? Uh, erase that. I would like to see Mr. Barton. He's not home. Where is he? Don't you know? I wouldn't have come here asking for him if I did, would I? I suppose that's true. What did you want with him? Conversation. About? Anything. You see, I like to talk to rich men. Are you rich? <laughs> I can't play the piano either. You could always learn. But being rich is harder, I found Mr. it. Mr. Mr. Goodwin, you must have some reason for coming here. Some reason concerning Uncle. Laura, you're being imaginative. Well, Uncle is late. He's probably still on that street corner playing Santa Claus. He enjoys it. Why bother about I what... I don't know, except... He's never been as late as this? Well, no. Not since he started that masquerade of his. Would you happen to know where the butler is? Out getting drunk, I suspect. He was in the kitchen a little while ago. Disappeared. Pleasant likes to look on the wine when it's red, or even when it's rye. Uh, no, I take that back. Oh, you do? He prefers Irish whiskey. We don't stock it, therefore... Oh, um... too bad. I better run along. Good night, Mr. Stevens. Miss Barton. Good night. Uh, I'll see you out. Prettiest butler I ever saw. Blonde. Now, old Dr. Tidmouse always said, beware of blondes, because... Mr. Goodwin, I... Well, I'm waiting. Well, I... Mr. Goodwin, you must know something about Uncle, something you didn't want to tell us. Makes you think so. Well, otherwise, your visit was just pointless. Let's suppose I know. Now, I might be a kidnapper. Oh, no. My honest brown eyes? Your first name is Archie, isn't it? Archie? Archie Goodwin. Hmm. Goes together nicely, don't you think? You work for Nero Wolf. You're going back to him now? I might be, but then again, I might be going to the movies. I recognized you. Your pictures have been in the papers. Take me with you to see Mr. Wolf. You can trust me. I never trust blondes. Oh, that's unfair. Well, no, I don't trust brunettes either. Furthermore, I'm not sure Mr. Wolf would want to see you, so I... Uh... So? So why don't you, uh, trail me home, Hmm? <laughs> Archie, where's Santa Claus? Guest room. He was tired. What? Uh... I've been trailed home. Indeed? By a blonde. Phooey. All right, I admit I didn't make any strenuous effort to shake her off, but she trailed... Where is she? Outside. Good. Your report. Oh, but she might freeze to death out there. That's her problem. Your report, Archie. 
It's short and simple. It would be simple. I haven't got time to resent that. A blonde is dying. As for the report, corner of 34th and Carlisle is a very quiet spot at night. No one was around but a bum who got into me for a quarter. For coffee, he said. You will not put that quarter on the expense account. Stop worrying. That was a private gesture. There were four corners. Corner number one had a dress shop on it. Corner number two, a drugstore with a beautiful redhead in the window making with a hair rinse. The ad said her name was Noreen, but it didn't give her phone number. Ah, gee. Third corner was devoted to a shoe store, and the fourth corner had a bank on it. A bank? Mm. Mm Uh-huh. Kind of thought we'd have a pause at that point. Mean something? Inspector Kramer's information consisted of... Oh, you're being coy. Kramer furnished the information the police could find no connection between the two murdered Santas. Except for the fact that they were both playing Santa Claus. Well, isn't that a little on the obvious side? This is an obvious case. The Barton home object. Uh, marble and old lace. The butler, his name is Pleasant, was among those missing. Among those present, Laura Barton, the old man's niece, and Wayne Stevens, his half-brother. Ah. Yeah, only for Laura. Stevens was not at all pretty. It was Laura Barton who followed you here. It was Laura. Archie, uh, go upstairs mm-hmm. yes, and... Uh... Oh, now, wait a minute. The girl, the weather, common humanity demands that you have... Louis, you speak for yourself, not humanity. I'm human. On occasion, a debatable point. Very well. Let her in. Oh, thanks. Laura, come in. Laura Barton, Mr. Wolf. How do you do? How much money do you inherit on the death of your uncle? What? That is known as a shock treatment. However, I need an answer. Uncle isn't dead, is he? That, for the moment, is irrelevant. How much? Half his estate. The other half? Wayne, uncle's half-brother. Very well. Archie, will you go upstairs and inform Mr. Barton that his niece is here? Uncle is here? On my way. Yes? Archie, Mr. Barton. Come in. Mr. Wolf would like you to come downstairs. I suppose he has a reason. Mm-hmm. A blonde reason, your niece. My niece? That's right. She did. Hey, where'd you get that? A man of my wealth finds it safer to carry a revolver. Yeah, but it's not safe to point it at people, especially for the people. Turn around, Goodwin. But, Mr. Barton, we're protecting you. By letting that girl into the house? If I had the time, I'd be amused. As it is! <laughs> Heaven. Oh. Uh-huh. Santa Claus came early. Go ahead. Which one are you referring to, my own or the one Santa gave me? You had better sit. No, nope. no, I had enough trouble getting up a little while ago. I'm staying out of any positions in which I might have to do that again. Mr. Barton is among the missing. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Hit me on the head and use the back exit. I checked with Fritz in the kitchen on the way here. He offered a reason for his peculiar behavior? Laura Barton. So? Why... I don't understand. Uncle wouldn't do it. Uncle apparently has. He also would appear fancies himself in costume. Well, he used to be very much interested in the stage. He, he acted for a while, a long time ago, till the family objected. But... Archie? Got it. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. You recite very nicely, Goodwin. This is Kramer. Let me have Wolf, huh? Mr. Wolf? Inspector Kramer. Yes, Inspector? The papers haven't been carrying it, Wolf, but uh, you're working on the Santa Claus case, aren't you? Possibility? You didn't send Goodwin down to headquarters on a possibility. Uh, Never mind. We're working on a line down here, Wolf. Now, look, uh, if it doesn't strain your professional ethics, you might be able to help. How? There's a bank on the corner of 34th Street in Carlisle. We got the thought that suppose a gang was preparing to take that bank tomorrow morning. Those Santa Clauses have been on the corner for nearly a week now. They might have noticed something about the bank's routine, guards or what have you, that could interfere with the gang's plan. A mighty ingenious and imaginative thought, Inspector. Hey, you didn't say yes or no. I have at the moment no opinion. That's all you're going to give us? At the moment. However, Inspector, in a very little while I shall give you... uh, (laughs) The murderer. 
Archie, Miss Parton will remain here. As for you... Yeah? You will return to 34th Street and find our coffee-loving friend. Hmm? You will persuade him in whatever manner you think best to return here with you. Huh? Yes. <laughs> you know, I think it's possible you may be able to put that quarter on the expense account after all. <laughs> You. What? Oh, why? I've seen you before. Yeah, I've learned to love the neighborhood. That's why it's going to break my heart. What is? Leaving it with you. With? It's sensitive about having guns pulled on me tonight. Let go of me, will you? Not until I... I tell you that, my will you? Gun looks in a lot better shape than you do. You're coming with me. Oh, where? Mr. Wolf would like to see you. Nero Wolf? Yeah. Well, why? He's trying to salvage a quarter. Ah, Archie. Uh huh. Complete with the. Uh, he wouldn't give his name. He did have a gun to it, though. This one. Yes. Archie, you know Miss Barton, of course? Hi. And Mr. Stevens? He joined us a moment ago. Miss Barton thought she'd be happy if he were here. Hello, Stevens. That's not the only reason I came. My brother is still missing. I'm concerned. Yes. You, sir, will you sit down? Watching people stand makes me uncomfortable. I don't have to. You do. Archie is stronger than you are. Mm, all right. Ah, that's better. If you don't mind, Mr. Wolf, I've never been here before, never met you. But you look as though you could handle things. I think my brother's been kidnapped. Possibility we should have to consider. Miss Barton, perhaps you have a theory, too? Well, I don't know. Uncle's been behaving strangely for weeks now. In what way? Oh, I'm not sure. Wayne... Well, of course, John's always been a little peculiar, but I'm afraid I saw nothing especially strange outside of this Santa Claus stunt, of course. I see. Miss Barton, your uncle played Santa Claus all week on one of the corners of 34th Street in Carlisle. I know. On two other corners, two other men indulged in the same activity. Those two other men are now dead. Oh, no. Well, wait. Mr. Wolf, you mean they were killed by mistake for Barton? It is true that one man made up of Santa Claus looks very much like any other man similarly costumed. But the answer is no. One of the two men was shot in his home after he had removed his costume. Well, then, what connection? Miss Barton, in the event that you wanted to hide a tree, where would you hide it? Hide a tree? Why, I, I wouldn't even begin to know. If you were very clever, you would hide it in a forest. If you wanted to hide a murder and were very clever, you would adopt the same principle. Wait, you mean that if someone wanted to kill Uncle and didn't want to be suspected... He'd... Go about murdering several people with an ostensible, if lunatic, reason. He would let us say go about killing Santa Clauses. I get it. Then people would think the man he really wanted dead for a special and private reason had been killed for something that didn't point to him. True. That was why two Santa Clauses were murdered tonight. The third Santa Claus, however, the real object of the murderer's attention was luckier or suspicious. He fled. Ah, uh, do I have to hang around here and listen to all this? You do, my unwashed friend. Mr. Barton fled, and the murderer was in a quandary. He had, so to speak, invested in two murders merely to make the third one confusing. But he found himself unable to commit that third murder. He couldn't find his victim. Could he ask the police to do so? Hardly. But he might try to inveigle a private detective such as myself into the job. Uh, that makes sense, Mr. Wolf, but... Uh... Why would my brother have deliberately fled from your house? I, I, I mean, he was protected here, so... But do I make myself clear? Very clear, Mr. Stevens. Archie, that gun you took from that dirty gentleman, you still have it? I still have it. Then would you mind pointing it at Mr. Stevens here until the police remove him? All right, come along, Steve. Well, that's the end of Mr. Stevens. Inspector Kramer will take good care of him from now on. But now, Mr. Wolf, Laura and me and the refugee from a washcloth over here would still like to know how and why and who was involved. I knew two people had a motive for John Barton's death. 
Laura Barton and Wayne Stevens. One of them proceeded to kill Santa Clauses in the hope that the police would assume those killings to be the work of a lunatic. The paper certainly hopped on that assumption. Yes. However, John Barton, aware that his life was in danger, escaped his murderer and hid. In this house? No. A man in Santa Claus costume came here and said he was Barton. However, he was an obvious imposter. He proved that by his flight when his niece came here. You mean he could fool you, but he knew he wouldn't be able to fool me, so... Precisely, therefore, was not Barton. Who was it? Who else had disappeared at the propitious moment? The butler, Pleasant. True. I distrust coincidence. Stevens needed an accomplice, hence he sent Pleasant here. And Pleasant would give you a song and dance about Barton's danger and then scram. You'd start investigating, discover Barton was missing, try to find him, and lead Stevens to his victim, huh? I frustrated that part of the plan by insisting on Pleasant's remaining here, which he did until... That part of it's fine. But how did you choose between Laura and Stevens? It was Stevens who knew, without being told, that Barton had been in this house and had fled from it. Yeah, yeah, you yourself mentioned that Stevens had only been here a moment, so you hadn't told him. Obviously, the butler phoned him as soon as he had hit you over the head and escaped. Furthermore, the butler masquerading as Barton had attempted to throw suspicion on Miss Barton. That convinced me of her innocence. Well, you've done it again, Mr. Wolfe, except for one minor detail. You are not very successful at irony, Archie. What minor detail? Where is Barton? In this house. Huh? When did that happen? When you arrived home, with the gentleman sitting near you. The bum? The... Wait, wait a minute. This I ought to be able to figure out myself. Laura said Barton used to be an actor. That's item one, huh? Yes, Archie. Also, why is a supposed tramp hanging around a deserted intersection for handouts? The answer is he wasn't. He was keeping an eye out for trouble he knew was after him. Oh, so it turns out I gave a quarter to a millionaire. Uncle, your uncle. Oh, that is... I, I know, my dear, yes, I'm uncle. Oh. I did a rather decent job, didn't I? Oh. No one recognized me. Uh, except, of course, you, Mr. Wolf. Not recognition, Mr. Barton. Logic. Archie, open some beer for us. Yes, sir. Logic, eh? Well, whatever it was, Mr. Wolf, I owe you a good deal. How can I ever repay you? Oddly enough, the answer is simplicity itself. <laughs> Make out a check. <sighs> you have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. <laughs> Tonight's transcribed story was based on the characters created by Rex Stout. This is an Edwin Fadiman program produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Larry Dobkin as Archie Goodwin, and Howard McNear, Grace Lennard, Vic Rodman, Herbert Butterfield, Bill Johnstone, Gene Bates, and Bob Bruce. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolfe and Archie will bring you The Case of the Bashful Body. Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.